Okay, I've gone to the next screen and I've clicked on port energy density. Let's calculate that and graph it. There we have a graph of the port energy density. If you know what a good cylinder head does, you can make a direct comparison between your work and that of somebody who's got a championship winning, record setting, whatever, all out best cylinder head. Unless you've got a number here, this is, doesn't mean much. But let me give you a number that you can ascertain the effectiveness of what we have here. A good pro stock, no, in fact, a record setting pro stock engine as of 2016, when flow tested using this program, showed a port energy of 27 foot pounds per square inch of valve per foot length of port, right? Um, now, just in case you're confused here, the foot-pounds isn't a torque figure. The foot-pounds is in energy. That is the same as the energy quoted for a bullet. It's quoted as being in foot-pounds. Anyone that's into guns will know that the muzzle energy, or the energy of a bullet, is its mass, is the result of its mass and speed. In fact, the actual formula is half mv squared. That is half the mass times the velocity squared. That comes out uh, as the energy the bullet contains. We're looking exactly the same thing here. This program works out the mass of the air in the port and uses that and the speed it's going at to compute the energy in the port. And then it looks at the length of the port the area of the valve and from that it computes the specific port energy or the port energy density. Now like I said if we can get this blue line here at some lift point up towards the 0.25 D mark to hit 27 foot pounds per square inch per foot of port we have a cylinder head which will get the same results as a pro stock head, assuming of course that the friction model of the bottom half of the engine is uh, suitably low, like a pro stock motor, and that the cam and induction are right. Certainly that's a measure of the cylinder head's capability. Now for what it's worth, a Formula One engine is also around 27 to maybe 30 foot-pounds per square inch per foot length of port. So you can see, regardless of the cylinder head you're working on, you can make a comparison of how effective your cylinder head is going to be. There is no other flow bench program which will calculate this and give you this data. Right, let's quit from that and uh, look at some of the data we see actually on the charts. So let's go back from there and go back to our flow test. Right, uh, there's a few things I'm going to point out here, so we'll do that in the next section. Let's take a look at this column here in black. It's the intake to exhaust flow ratio, as you can see written out there. As we go down, you'll see that number changes. Now there's many, a uh, tech article has been written and engine builders have put forward their uh, thoughts on what the optimum is. Uh, typically this quoted as being about 0.7, but you can see numbers from a little under that to as much as 0.75. That is the exhaust flow being about 70 to 75 percent of the intake. Yes, that's a working number that's okay to go along with, but the real fact of the matter is, is that the optimum intake to exhaust flow ratio 
is not a fixed value. It actually depends on the compression ratio. In fact, it's totally dependent on the compression ratio, yet nowhere will you find an explanation as to why this is. It's quite a complex thing. It's something I cover in my uh, seminars uh, so that when people leave here, they know exactly what to do in the case of uh, the intake to exhaust ratio. So that column's pretty important here. Also here we have the mean feet per second port speed, right? We really need at the peak lift to have this number here hit the 300 mark. That is a, a key number. 300 or more, maybe as high as 350, ensures good torque output from the engine. And I, I don't mean just good torque output, I'm talking about world-class torque output. The same goes with the exhaust. If the exhaust is too lazy, the engine doesn't come on the cam as well as it should. It can reverse flow too easy. That exhaust port needs to be efficient and small, i.e. it needs to be able to flow a lot of air fast. That means the exhaust keeps going out and it does not reverse flow. That is one of the keys to low speed torque without any loss of top end horsepower. Okay, here we are back on the opening page. And now we've done some flow testing. We can enter some numbers here and get some data on how our cylinder head is likely to perform. Everything in the white boxes is what we're going to enter. We're going to put the port air, mean port area in from our flow testing number one. We're going to put the CFM at the peak valve lift that we're going to use. And then the bore, stroke. Then we're going to tell it, oh, we'll put in the compression ratio we're going to use, the number of cylinders over here, and then we tell it to calculate. Well, I've already pushed this button here. Now, what we've got here <clears throat> is the program calculates the mark number of the port. It does this in a slightly different way to the classical way that J uh, Charles Fayette Taylor uses in his uh, uh, two volumes of uh, the book called The Internal Combustion Engine. In this instance, what we're doing is we are calculating the Mach number as it applies to a high performance, high revving engine, i.e. whatever street motors we're going to use. Taylor's original one was for aero engines, piston aero engines, which typically don't rev much past about 3000 RPM max. Once we've got this number here, and it calculates this based on the compression ratio and the downdraft angle of the port, right? Because the, that changes things there. So this, the program then uses this number to calculate various other things. First off, it will calculate the RPM that we're likely to have peak horsepower with the head we've just ported. It'll also tell us the shift RPM we're likely to need to apply. It will also tell us the mean piston speed at peak power. Here it will give us the best torque output we can expect if the engine's built right. Notice there's a comment here. This does assume you will install the appropriate cam. For details on this, see Torque Master Cam Program. Now, here's the first uh, prediction of interest here. And this is the horsepower that the engine is likely to develop. That is your engine based on this. It's a 383 Chevy with this cylinder head is 488 horsepower based on the port area. Here, the, this horsepower occurs when this Mach number occurs in the port. This here is the airflow limitation of the port, right? And usually the power comes up between these two, usually nearer this one. 
Uh, if we look down here, this says this is the port area limiting power as set by the port speed stated as the Mach number there. When we go to this one here, horsepower limitation, it does make an assumption that you know how to build a bottom end right because this number here is based on 5.5 pounds of air per horsepower per hour and this is corrected for the compression ratio used. Here we have the torque per cubic inch, the torque per liter, the horsepower per cubic inch and the horsepower per liter. Here we've got a button here that if we want to we can change everything to metric which I'll do now. There, if you're working in metric, is what you will have. Let's click it back. So, what we now have here is a program which not only guides you towards porting your cylinder head, but also predicts what you can get from it so long as you follow, so long as it falls in the statements made here. Now, how do you get this program? That's what we'll deal with next. Let me talk a little bit about the science of flying cylinder heads at the moment. Some of you are going to think this is a little bit beyond basic stuff here. The moves I've showed you to do are basic enough. What you're seeing here is the interpretation of them and what they're likely to do in far greater depth than is usually shown on porting videos on YouTube or any other channel for that matter. For those of you who want to learn to be expert cylinder head porters, and I really don't like to use the word porters, if you want to be a cylinder head development engineer for a race team or for your own business, then I thoroughly recommend that you come along and attend one of my How to Build Horsepower three-day seminars. Just go to www.davidvisardperformanceseminars.com. All the details will be there. I hold these seminars about every two months, so it's and it's a small group seminar, so we do have one-on-one -on -one contact. Thank you. With what we've covered so far, you should be pretty much up to speed on how to use the program. Of course, you may have uh, only maybe entry-level skills at using the tools for porting, mainly even not know what tools to get. Go to the link shown below and get my book from Amazon.com. That will cover everything that you need to know to get you going. As far as getting this program is concerned, then try this link here and that will uh, get you in touch with um, a source. If you're attending my seminars, of course, you get this program free. Hopefully all your porting sessions will go that much better now, but you will definitely be one step nearer a pro stock porter. Thank you.